So coming up here on your right hand side, that little white building is the Temple of Bologna, built in 1760 by Simeon Chambers, named after the Roman goddess of war. Uh, it's not a temple at all, it is a garden quarry. It's just a beautiful romantic place to sit out in the gardens and watch the world go by. And we have several follies here in the garden, so we see more as we go around. Uh, this one is grade two listed. And despite its appearance, it does look as if it should be made out of brick, stone, or even marble. But in fact, it's all wood. It's made from the American smokewood tree. And they would harvest the bark of that tree back in the day and produce a lovely orange or yellow dye. So we're coming down Camellia Walk here. And uh, unfortunately, all the Camellia flowers have now gone. They're quite an early flowering plant. But uh, anybody that enjoys a nice cup of tea will probably already know that the Camellia sinensis is actually the tea plant. It's the hand-picked tips of the leaves that produce your early morning brew. And we really are a nation of tea lovers here in the UK. We consume on average around 62 billion cups a year, and that's just the UK. Uh, it's also using cosmetics to cleanse and tighten skin and in traditional Chinese medicines for over 4,000 years. So we've got some uh, lime trees here on your left hand side. Uh, common lime, large leaf lime and silver lime. Here to your right, this is the Berberis Dell. We've got lots of Berberis trees and we have magnolias there as well. Now, <clears throat> let's tell you a little bit about the history of the gardens. In 1759, Augusta, the Dowager Princess of Wales, the mother of George III, laid aside nine acres of her land as a botanical physics garden with the help and advice of her friend, the Earl of Butte. In 1772, she passed away. Her son was by then George III. He inherited her estate and he combined that with his grandfather's nearby Richmond estate. So from her initial nine acres and the amalgamation of the two royal estates, we now have the 326 acres that you see here today. And that's why we refer to Kew Gardens in the plural with the N S on the end, gardens, because it's two royal estates merged into one. The route the explorer takes today will cover an area of about two and a half miles. So we're turning right here. And as we make this right hand tour, uh, turn, so if you look to your left hand side, you'll see a lighter coloured pathway. That will take you to our two art galleries. The first one is the Shirley Sherwood Gallery of Botanical Art. And that was the first gallery in the world dedicated to botanical art alone. And Dr. Shirley Wood, uh, she is, doc, sorry, Dr. Shirley Sherwood, she has a, some of her own collection there, but we've got three new exhibits and they're based on the Quran. So we've got plants of the Quran, we've got all flowers are for me, and we've got symbols of the Quran, which is a light installation. So coming down this roadway now, in front of us, you'll see a long, large building. And this is the Temperate House, built by Decimus Burton. And this is the largest remaining Victorian glass house in the world. And it's twice the size of the Palm House here in Kew, at 648 feet long. Now it underwent a five-year restoration project, uh, which ended in 2018. Uh, the cost was around 41 million pounds, and that was partially funded by the National Heritage Lottery. It took 200 people to complete the process. And now in there we have around 15, uh, 100 species of plants and they're all from the frost-free regions of the world and some of these now are extinct in the wild and they only exist in other botanical gardens or private collections.
So we're going to be coming up to our next stop, which is stop number two for the Temperate House, the two art galleries, and the Pavilion Bar and Grill. This is stop number two, everyone. So if you look to your left-hand side there, that red bricks building is a Marion North Gallery. And she was a Victorian painter of plants, trees, and scenery. Traveled the world totally alone, which was almost unheard of for a lady of that era. And uh, in fact, she went to 15 countries in 14 years. And she went off, in her words, to paint the peculiar vegetation of other lands. Now she had no formal training whatsoever. Despite that, she uh, took the botanical and scientific world by storm with her amazing artwork. And she had a lot of admirers for her work, and one of those was Charles Darwin. So we are just moving it away again now. So coming up here on your right hand side, that low level building you can see is Pavilion Bar and Grill. And you can sit out the back or you can sit out the front underneath the grapevines. And this is a lovely part of the gardens to sit outside. Not quite as busy as some of the other eateries we have here in Kew. And uh, even, even better, uh, you're in the shadow there of the Great Pagoda, and we'll see that a lot clearer in just a few moments. But this one was actually built on the original site, which uh, the first one was built on in 1888. It was, however, burnt to the ground several years later in 1913 by a couple of la uh, lady suffragettes campaigning for women's rights, and in particular the right to vote in public elections. They were apprehended on Richmond Green, given a custodial sentence. Uh, there was a lot of unrest in the country at the time. The ladies went on a hunger strike. Now, the powers that be didn't want anything to happen to the ladies, so they thought they better let them go, and that's exactly what they did. So we're gonna be turning right here. Now, if I can take you back in time, all the way back to George III, when he was on the throne. Now, he loved Kew Gardens, and uh, later on, he was lovingly referred to as Farmer George, because he spent more time here in Kew than he did on affairs of state. And uh, the Kew would have looked quite different to how you see it today. Uh, it would have been uh, filled with lots of cattle and sheep, and not so many trees, hardly any trees in fact, and there would have been no houses obviously to your left hand side, so it would have been quite different. Now it was originally very very flat because it was built on the floodplains of the River Thames. Uh, George III he didn't like it, he thought it was boring, so he said to his soldiers come in and dig out dells, make hills and mounds, just to make that a little bit interesting, and that's exactly what what he did. Uh, he had lots and lots of his soldiers come in from the Staffordshire Regiment of George III's army. And a first example of that is coming up on your right hand side. You'll see a mustard colour post. And if you see how that's been dug down, this is the Chinese grove. Lots of lovely Chinese planting down there, leading the eye to the Great Pagoda there in the distance. 
And as we go around the gardens, I'll point some more examples of this. But the rule of thumb is, uh, anything you see here today that isn't completely flat, you'll know has been man-made. So coming up on your left-hand side between these two trees, uh, this is the community project where like-minded people get together in groups and test their botanical skills and learn all about plants and flowers and trees and things like that. That's to your left-hand side. Now in a couple of moments, we'll be turning right. And if we went left instead, we'd be going out of the Lion Gate, closest gate to Richmond Town Centre. Uh, it's about four stops on the bus or about a 20 minute walk. hand side. Uh, this beautiful building, the Great Pagoda, was built by Sir William Chambers. Now he was one of the favoured architects of the royal uh, family at the time and was responsible for several buildings here in Kew. So you're going to hear me mention his name a couple of more times. So this building stands 50 metres tall, has 10 storeys and on each of those corners there's a beautiful golden dragon. Now the bottom ones are by far the larger, carved in wood in the traditional style and they get smaller and smaller as they go up the tower along with each floor. Now the rest of them are all 3D printed and made out of resin and that lessens the weight on the great historic building. So inside there's a tight spiral Georgian staircase of about 254 steps but once you get to the top on a clear day you can see to the centre of London one side and the top of Windsor Castle on the other. So we're just about to move away again. Now during the Second World War, the Great Pagoda became the perfect secret testing place of bombs. So a hole was cut in each of those floors and you can still see evidence of that today. And dummy bombs with a smoke attachment were blocked from the top to the bottom to test their aerodynamics and just see how they travelled through the building. Now, George IV used to like to hold lavish parties in there. So you can imagine the ladies of the day with those great big look dresses that they would wear, uh, trying to get up this spiral staircase. It must have been very difficult, but if your king has requested you, you don't refuse. So we're now moving away from China and en route to Japan. If you keep looking to your right <coughs> hand side, you'll get glimpses of the gateway of the Imperial Messenger, or Chikushu Mom. The gateway is a replica of the original, which stands in the Japanese city of Kyoto. The gateway itself is crafted from the closed grain wood of the Hinoki Cypress, held sacred by the followers of the Shinto faith. And around it are three little gardens representing peace, activity and harmony. And it's a symbolic garden, so there's large boulders represent the mountains of Japan, the gravel raked in a circular motion represents the seas. And there's a beautiful red maple planted at the front by Her Imperial Highness Princess Seiko in 1996. And around it are 17 Japanese cherry trees. So coming up on your right hand side, there's a very long roadway, 1,030 metres, or just over half a mile. Now this is Holly Walk and was known as Love Lane, and for many years was a public right of way. Now, it's of great historical significance because it was the dividing line between the two royal estates, merged together by George III in 1772. Down there now, you'll find a large, diverse collection of hollies, which uh, are about 150 years old now. And down the other end, you'll find the rooftop walkway, which uh, is about 18 metres tall, but it meanders around the top of the trees 
about 200 yards, uh, right up there at the top of the tree ecosystem with the birds and bees, butterflies, lichen and fungi. And uh, that will also give you a lovely view over the queue. There is 102 steps or there is a lift as well. Now we're coming over into the evergreens and this is a lovely part of the gardens. When the rest of the deciduous trees are standing bare later on in the year, you can come round here and they're actually at their best because they much prefer the colder months of the year. So this is lovely and lush and green uh, when that happens and we still have some hollies here left over from the holly walk. Now conifers themselves have actually been on the planet for over 300 million years. Now Q can be perceived as an arboretum, which is just Latin for place of trees. And we've got around 14,000, 2,000 different species, and we can plant up to 100 trees every year. Unfortunately, you can see some of these are still quite brown from last year's intense heat and uh, prolonged drought. So we're hoping that they will recover, but uh, they're not doing too well, some of these at the moment. So in a moment, we're coming up to a crossroads on your right hand side. There's an avenue of Golden Larch. To the left hand side, that will take you down to Queen Charlotte's Cottage and Grounds. Now the cottage itself has never actually lived in. But Queen Charlotte, her husband George III, their 15 children, uh, would use it for long summer days together, just enjoying each other's company. They had a menagerie as well there, type of zoo. They had oriental cattle, exotic birds, and one of the first kangaroos to arrive here in the UK. And a very strange sounding creature called a quagua, which was part zebra, part horse. Now as you can see the, cha the changes in the trees here, these browny reds as we go through. Uh, we're just coming into our redwood grove. And in a moment we're going to drive onto a large circular paved area, which is the circumference of a 3,000 year old sequoia redwood in California. Now our tallest tree in the garden is here, which I'll point out to you. And uh, it stands 40 meters tall but it's only about 140 years old so if you have a quick look out of your carriages now onto the floor you'll see this large circle beneath us and to your right hand side this is the very first tree there where the people are standing uh, that's the tallest tree in the gardens now they're actually named after chief sequoia of a native american tribe and he's a very accomplished man he completed one of the first alphabets which he used for communication and to write about the history of his tribe and to date the sequoias remain one of the largest living organisms on the planet Now coming up here on your right hand side, uh, we've got this dark bush that you can see there, purple colour, and overlaying that is a feathery green tree, that's an adult dawn redwood. Now these are now uh, nearly extinct in the wild. We've got our little water lily pond there to your right. Uh, this was uh, designed to encourage breeding birds and other wildlife. So looking around us here, this is the pine tun or pine eaton. So we're surrounded by pines, conifers, spruces, uh, firs. Uh, but have a look at this one coming up on your left hand side. Now I was just going to point this out for you. This is a bishop's pine. Now you see the pine cones are actually on the main branches of the tree there and here to your right hand side this tree that's going to fall backwards away from us this yeah, is a maritime pine they were harvested by the thousands 
from the Greek islands because they made amazing uh, masks on ships and tea clippers and schooners back in the day. Now to your left hand side you'll see a double barred fence. That's a natural area given to us by Queen Victoria on her diamond jubilee. Now it's about 40 acres and her only proviso is we should leave it in its uh, natural state and of course we've honoured her wishes. Uh, we use a very low maintenance woodland program. It's a raised rugged trail. And at the beginning of spring, it's home to the Bluebell Woods as well. Now to your right hand side, over that uh, grassy mound there, that hump, uh, that's a lake and there's four islands there and an award winning crossing. To the left, down the dirt track, that's the children's log adventure trail. Now that's made from fallen trees like ash, elm, oak, uh, there's pine and eucalyptus and you can test your balancing skills as you go across those logs and there's also carved and wooden mushrooms, little toys and animals and it is the only place in Kew you're allowed to climb on our trees because our trees are our living collection. Here to your left hand side the large picnic table was actually an art installation left over from Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. It will seat 32. So this is stop number four, everyone. Alice in So we're just moving away now. Now if you have a look at the trunks of the trees, you'll see that they wear black badges. Now that would tell you the Latin name and place of origin. And uh, there's also trees that have a blue badge on them. And they're our champion trees. They're the best and biggest of their kind in the UK. So we've got 317 of those. And we also have a silver badge on some of them as well. And that tells you they're interactive if you've got a smartphone and that way you'll get a lot more information. So to the left hand side here is the acid fields. Great place for biodiversity. And also it is full of ants. So another of our little follies there on the right hand side made from green oak. And most follies generally um, are there just to enhance the landscape. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions to that rule, but generally they follow an either Greek or Roman style, apart from the great pagoda that we saw just a moment ago. So looking to your right hand side, you see this tree here. Have a look, it's got a silver badge on, and that will tell you it's interactive. So to your left hand side now, we're running alongside the River Thames, which is tidal. If you look to the left side of the river, you'll see a large house, which is Zion House, and that's a London residence of the Duke of Northumberland. And anybody that liked the TV series Bridgerton, that's where a lot of that was actually filmed. Bridgerton? So from left to right, down there at the end of that avenue of uh, oaks, you'll see the palm house and this is the Zion Vista. That's the longest of three protected vistas which form a monumental triangle on your map. Now uh, they're protected by an act of parliament so we cannot build on them or obscure them in any way without the permission of parliament. So now coming up on your left hand side there's a cedar of Lebanon and that makes a natural archway to your right with this red oak from the United States and we're coming into the oak collection now and uh, if there are oaks on the black badges they will say the word quercus meaning of the oak genus Now the whole of this area was actually uh, absolutely landscaped completely by uh, Lancelot Capability Brown. Now the Capability was his nickname and he got that 
by going to rich landowners and saying, Sir, may I attend your garden? It has great capability. He did a lot of work here for George III in Zion House across the water and the last 19 years of his life working in Hampton Court Palace. Now we're going to take a slight left turn here. If we carried on on this path, we'd be going into the Rhododendron Dell and unfortunately the train can't go down there, we'd get stuck. Uh, so there's over 700 different varieties of rhododendron and they were brought back from the foothills of the Himalayas from one of Kew's early expeditions. Now, if you remember at the start of the tour, I told you that Kew uh, at the beginning was flat, very, very flat. Okay, so keep looking to your right hand side in a moment and you'll see how it just falls away the ground falls away uh, the whole of this area was dug out with hand tools took 300 foot soldiers to dig this right hand side out so have a look there on your right hand side now keep looking to the right because in the distance you'll see a thatched roof which is the minka house just coming up now and that literally translates to House of the People. Came to London for an exhibition in 2001, later donated to Kew and re-erected here using traditional Japanese methods. There's no nuts, bolts, screws holding it together, just expert wooden joinery. And there is an exhibition in there so you can go in and have a look. Now, one family actually lived in that property for well over a hundred years and it's quite a unique building because it was built to withstand earthquakes so it sits right in the middle of our bamboo grove and there's about 130 different varieties of bamboo and uh, it's a very versatile material we can do so much with bamboo down there you'll also find azaleas camellias comancias they are um, kind of fizzled out with flowers but the bushes are still down there. And we've got strawberry trees down there as well. But uh, Kew is first and foremost, a scientific institute for plant and fungal research. And we have around 350 scientists based here and throughout the world. And together with over 800 agencies, they put their heads together to try and find solutions to some of the world's most pressing issues like water sustainability and biodiversity loss, just to name a couple. Now, our scientists are working very hard at the moment um, in over 110 countries throughout the world, uh, trying to sort out all these different issues. And we're very interested in trying to find crops for the future, because as the world heats up, the crops we have now are not going to survive so we need to find new ones for us and our future generations. Now, we're still in the oak grove with most of the trees on your right side are from the United States. And we now know that one mature oak tree can sustain five adults in oxygen for one day. So it's now more important than ever to protect our trees. They do so much for us. They help to provide shade, lowering temperatures. They help with flood protection, soaking up uh, a lot of the water. They provide a uh, habitat for birds and bees. And uh, also they help us with materials for building uh, different things. So uh, they're vitally important to us. Now we're coming up to stop number five for the Rhododendron Zell, Brentford Gate and Car Park. Children's Garden, the Orangery, Kew Palace, and the Elizabeth Gate, which is on Kew Green. So stop five, everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, everyone, we're just about to move away. So pull up to your left hand side, just in front of us on the apex of this grass. Uh, and I was just pointing that out for you. This lovely old tree, this is a sweet chestnut castanea. And look how mobbly and gnarled that is, very characterful. Uh, it's 200 years old. And um, that's mm. what they make the Spanish castanets and furniture from. Now if you look to your right hand side, there's a tree by the bench there. Now that's exactly the same species, but it does look quite different, doesn't it? It's about a hundred years younger. Now to the left hand side is the children's garden. And this is an award winning area. It's sectioned off in four parts, representing the four elements. But it also, also teaches children about plants, trees and flowers and everything they need to grow and survive. Now sitting in the children's garden are around 100 mature trees and a good proportion of those are our eucalypt collection. The gum trees as they're known in their native Australia. Now they're very clever trees and they rid themselves of parasites, strangling vines and roots they simply shed their bark. You'll see a good example of that on your left hand side and Niall is just pointing those out for you. Now the eucalyptus itself is used as a decongestion in aromatherapy and in bathroom products like toothpaste, shower gels, that kind of thing. Now can you smell the eucalyptus in the air? It is quite strong today. I think that's because it's a bit muggy and because we've had rain as well. So a lovely smell coming from those. We've got about 39 of the 900 different species. Now to your left hand side, we're setting up for cue the music. Uh, we've got a lot of great artists coming to play for us. People like Jules Holland, the 80s group, Human League, Bastille, and many more. So all the information about that and tickets can be found on our website. So you can see a right building to your left, right down the end by the stage that's being built. That's the Orange Room, built by Sir William Chambers. And um, originally it was used to hold orange trees, lemons, limes and other exotics. Uh, but it wasn't very successful. So now it's a lovely restaurant with a hot and cold menu. Okay, so uh, we just have uh, some people who are just uh, uh, a little bit close to each other. So we're uh, progressing and going on. And in a moment, we're going to come out onto the Great Broadwalk. Now, this is thought to be one of the longest double herbaceous borders in Europe, if not even further afield. Now it's all cut out in semicircles all the way down and it's kept within families. So there's the daisy families, li lily families, there's grasses, onion family, mint family, and it's a mirrored planting um, which uh, is one side is a reflection of the other. So we're going to turn right onto the Great Broad Wall. So to your left hand side, you'll see the sloping glass roof of the Princess of Wales Conservatory, which is Augusta, the Dowager Princess of Wales and founder of the Guardians. Uh, but it was opened by the late Diana, Princess of Wales, in 1987. Uh, inside you'll find 10 climatic zones ranging right the way through from dry desert to rainforest. Uh, some of the buildings actually underground to conserve energy. And so David Attenborough actually planted a time capsule there in 87, due to be dug up in 2087 said to contain some very rare seeds and lots of very, very important information for our future generations. Mm -hmm. 
So to your left hand side you'll also find several little gardens. You'll find uh, first of all the Bonsai House, the Davis Alpine House, the Aegeus Evolution Garden, uh, Rock Gardens and Waterfalls, uh, Duke's Garden, Grass Garden, Sunken Garden, Kitchen Garden. So there's lots and lots to see on that side. So to the left hand side now you'll see a cream and beige colour building. At the bottom there is the Botanic Restaurant. Get a lovely afternoon tea there. And here, as we make this right-hand turn, tucked away right in the right-hand side corner, you'll find the little water lily house. And this charming little house has the Victoria Amazonica giant water lily in. And we also now have the Victoria Boliviana and Cruziana, and they are in the Princess of Wales Conservatory. And last, but by no means least, to your left hand side uh, is the Palm House, built by Decimus Burton in collaboration with Richard Turner, an Irish shipbuilder. They use the latest shipbuilding techniques. Uh, it's held up with curved iron and 16,000 curved panes of glass. There is a walkway at the top so you can look down. It's a tropical glass house. It's a tropical glass house, so there's things like banana, vanilla, uh, cocoa, there's papaya, macadamia nuts, there's breadfruit, spices, rubber plants, and even the, one of the world's oldest pop plants, an Eastern Cape Cycad. Now the parterre to your right hand side with the summer selection, this is changed four times a year in line with the seasons. And those statues you can see to the right are our, are our late Queen's heraldic beasts, replicas of the original which stood at her coronation in 53 at Westminster Abbey. Each one represents her ancestors and various places in the UK. The last one here by the Black Bin is a white greyhound of Richmond, which is Richmond in Yorkshire. But have a look at him, because I think he looks like Scooby-Doo. What do you think? Now behind the palm house, we have Kew's Rose Garden. We've got some uh, hybrids known only to Kew, and we also have um, some extra scented ones, which are lovely. But we are now coming back to our base stop, Victoria Gate. Uh, so from now, your driver, from um, myself, Sheena, enjoy the rest of your day with us in queue. And please remember your ticket is valid for uh, the next three trips. The next one goes out at four, five, and six. So now you'll ring the bell and it's safe for you to alight the train. But for me, thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.